I have a very special guest, Leela Roche, <laughs> which you might have been hearing of lately in the Asian community for a very <laughs> pioneering video, like one of a kind that I've never seen that has garnered a lot of praise, but also a little bit of controversy. But before we get into that video, which is about like this white girl making out of the Japanese guys, Leela, <laughs> <laughs> tell our audience a little bit about who you are. Okay, well, um, yeah, you know, my name is Leela Rose, and I am actually an actress, for those of you who don't know me. Um, I've just done, like, mainly, like, feature films. I'm a, I originally grew up in Joplin, Missouri, and I love my hometown. I, I would say that, you know, I feel like I'm a fairly good person. Like, <laughs> I do a lot of community service. Uh, I help out within my community. Um, I'm really involved with, um, you know, trying to help out with other people that have gone through, like, a natural disaster. And uh, also, I mean, acting is, like, one of my many passions. So... Um, especially like live theater, so I enjoy going to um, like black box type setting uh, plays. Uh, yeah, overall, like I, I would say I'm pretty much like a party girl. That's probably why I love living in Tokyo. Uh, yeah. I mean, for the <laughs> audience, like you, know, you, you know, twenty four seven there. Yeah, yeah. And for our audience, you live <laughs> in Tokyo. Like right now, you're in Dallas filming, filming uh, something. Yes, and, yes. But you live yes. in Tokyo currently. I'm. Yes, yes. Currently, I'm in Dallas uh, working with uh, an Emmy award-winning filmmaker, which I'm really excited about. Um, this is going to be a great opportunity for me. And uh, then I go back to Tokyo in March, which is like my favorite city. <laughs> so I'm excited. <laughs> so, so how does a Missouri Midwestern like, girl like you end up in living in Tokyo? Like, How did that come about? Uh, well, I used to be a flight attendant. Uh, I won't say the name of the airline for certain reasons, but I have always loved traveling, like, ever since I was a young kid. Um, it's just always been a passion of mine, and I enjoy, like, learning about different cultures, and also another reason why I love traveling is because of the food. The food is amazing. That's honestly one of the main reasons. I'm a huge Yelper. Uh, <laughs> Um, yeah, I just love learning about history and different types of cultures, and I think the best way to learn about, you know, the history of a different country and learning about other cultures is by immersing yourself in that country, uh, and that's exactly what I did. Uh, I used to be a flight attendant, and I do a lot of routes to Narita, and uh, if you don't know where Narita is, it's about two hours away from yeah. Tokyo. Um, that was a really expensive taxi ride for me when I went from Narita <laughs> to Tokyo. I'm like, oh my god! <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it was like a 12-hour. Uh, out of Detroit is where I was based, uh, and that's like about a 12-hour flight all the way, and it's just like, it's killer. It's the worst thing in the world. I feel so bad for passengers. I'm like, thank God I'm working this flight and get to walk up and down these aisles because yeah. I cannot sit down. Okay. Um, <laughs> so you, so you end up moving to, to Tokyo just because you love the culture, and yeah. you're like, why not? Exactly. Yeah, it, it Japan is like one of those countries that's just, it's so weird and different from Western mm -hmm, culture mm -hmm. that it's fascinating, you know, and it's something different than what I'm used to. Um, I mean, I think what I grew up with uh, as a Midwesterner, there was a lot of blonde people like me, a lot of people with blue eyes, and so I know that, you know, Asians, they populate most of the world, but for <laughs> me, that's something exotic, and right. It's something I'm very attracted to. It's something different than what I'm used to seeing day after day after day. So you actually and have I think a. That's one of the reasons why I was like so attracted. Yeah. So you actually have a preference huh? for Asian I'm guys. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I was like, say you say you actually yes, have a preference. Yes, like, I'm how did that? I'm just curious. Kind of like we'll, we'll get back on the, the Tokyo. Like, how did that come around? I'm just curious. Like, growing up in the mid Missouri, you know, that's not <laughs> the most common, you know, thing to do. This is, this is going to sound really weird. Um, so I was a really, really into Power Rangers as a kid. <laughs> and <laughs> You know, one of the Power Rangers went to my high school in Texas. Really? <laughs> yeah. Really? <laughs> uh, MacArthur High. I forget. Was it the Green Ranger? Uh, I forget. Anyways, continue. 
but um, Zach, the Black Power Ranger, mm -hmm. um, he's Asian, mm -hmm. and I thought he was the coolest thing in the world as a kid, and um, I just... I don't know, like, I thought he was fairly attractive, and, you know, like, as a kid, whenever you're, like, growing up in media, you know, you might have, like, your Disney movies that portray, like, mainly, you know, like, tall, dark, and handsome as, you know, the prince type, and for me, like, I thought he was that tall, dark, and handsome type of guy, wow. and that is just what, that's just kind of, like, what started it and spiraled off for me to, like, wow. find that attraction in Asian men, and I guess the majority of Asian men they have dark hair, they have dark eyes, and it's just, it's something exotic to me that I enjoy looking at. I I mean, everybody has their preference. Like, guys, sure. like, you know, they fetish, you know, they're either an ass man or a boob man. Like, yeah, that's just the yeah. way society works. You <laughs> but know? you know what? You know, hey, 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 go, go Power Rangers. Like, good for them. <laughs> exactly. <right? laughs> I love Power Rangers. Okay, so <laughs> you end up moving to Tokyo, um, and... One day you're out in Rapongi with your girlfriend <laughs> and you yes. and you do a video. <laughs> yeah. Tell us yeah. how this happened. All right. So there's this uh there was like three clubs we went to that night um prior, um uh, Jumanji, Magnet, and Miss. Uh and you know, we were dancing, we had been drinking, clearly it's very obvious on the video, and you know, we were just you know, it was just two girlfriends, like, having a girls' night out, um, having fun. And we had just, you know, I had met most of those guys that you saw me kissing mm -hmm. prior in the clubs. I was dancing with them. I was, like, you know, you know, being a girl and <laughs> a single girl. Um, and, you know, I had been kissing them prior before actually uh, taking to the streets to, you know, actually, you know, just randomly kissing them, you know what so, I mean? So, so in the editing, so just for, started, yeah, just yeah. for our audience, you know, cause I, I do like these educational videos, but also like viral videos. And there's a lot of things that sort of get lost in the editing and lost in translation. Yes. Yes, exactly. So, you know, one of the controversies has been that you are very aggressive with, with what appeared to be like completely random strangers, like they were strangers to you in the beginning of the night, but at that video, yes. that you had actually interacted with them before. Yes, yes. So like I had interacted with them prior before doing the videos, and it was just kind of something like really funny. I guess you know, whenever you're drunk and yeah. um, you know you're under the influence, so you're coming up with all these like I guess you're, you're they're like look, it's like liquid courage in a way. So you got all these like, creative juices like flowing in your head. And uh, for me, I just thought it'd be funny if, you know, I ran right back into them and, like, filmed them. And I wasn't honestly planning on doing anything with it other than, you know, just documenting it for my travels and for yeah. my experiences and just keeping it for myself. Um, but, yeah, no, I, I had previously spoke to them and, like, I was dancing with them um, in the club. And, and you like, guys have been, like, flirting had, and, you know. Exactly. So we had, you know, previous experiences with each other, with all those guys that you saw in the video. Um, and like in one of them, like I really wanted to put in the video was a guy saying, why, mine, mine, because, you know, you saw him pushing me away saying that because that's the thing in, in Tokyo, you know, everybody in a, everybody in Tokyo, they use mine. They're like, go oh, drop me your line. You know, what's your line account? And I had gotten everybody's line account. I got everybody's consent that I, and I, I, I let them know what I was doing. And there's also yeah. a portion in the video, if you notice, um, I went up to like one of the guys that I like in the car area and um, it kind of cuts off so people would know that I was giving him consent that I was filming because there's a part of me saying like, oh, I'm doing a video and, mm -hmm. you know. Right, right. And like it's, it wasn't like any of the guys were truly trying to reject you. That was all part of the setup, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And you yeah. know what? I have to give you props for being an American girl in Tokyo and being that assertive and aggressive. Because let me tell you a story of when me and my buddy, <laughs> one of my trainers, uh, when we were in Tokyo uh, teaching Japanese mm -hmm. guys how to talk to girls, um, we were, you know, out one night and my guy, one of my trainers, sees this American girl. Yeah. Um, this is like in Rapongi or somewhere. It's like 3 a.m. in the morning or something like that. She's sitting on the yeah. street and she's just crying. She is crying. Oh, no. And like 
normally you don't approach a girl that that is so emotional because you think okay she yeah. wants to be alone but he was like is, is something what's wrong are you okay right he's all concerned and it's like oh my god like they you, you like speak english like yeah yeah you know he's, he's his name is dash and he's uh from australia and it's like yeah yeah we're just here for a week and it's like what, what's wrong it's like i've been here for a month and like she's saying this between sobs she's like i've been here for a, a month <laughs> And no Japanese guys will be my friend. Oh, like, no, no one oh would talk God, to why. her. No one would talk to her. For the entire that's month so she'd been sad. there, she had, like, made but almost no friends. Over there. Yeah. Like, Japanese guys just don't talk to, you know, females. They're, they're, it's a very passive-aggressive type of culture. Mm -hmm. And they just, and, and they work, you know, 14-hour days. And they just, they're so socially impaired. That's the thing that people don't realize about about Japan, like their their population is on a decrease because you know they just they don't know how to talk to each other. It, and I mean this is just from an outsider's perspective. I don't represent all of Tokyo. I'm just one woman, but as a as an outsider, that's what I have noticed. You know, there mm -hmm. a lot of Japanese men are very socially impaired when it comes to talking to women. So I understand where she's coming from, but I've also been told that you know a lot of a lot of Japanese men, especially Rapongi, mm -hmm. if you know Rapongi, you know that area very well and what yeah. you know else goes on there. And um, a lot of guys are very luck reluctant to talk to very pretty foreigner foreign women because they think they're work working girls. Mm -hmm. And that's just that's just the reality of it. That's Rapongi. It's a fun area, but it's a very you have to be careful. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know. That's the yeah, case. You yeah. know, there's a lot of working women out there. Yeah. That I mean, are you know what? That will That's... try to grab you into the bars. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, the the game in, in, in Tokyo and just Japan in general was very different um, mm -hmm. in, in most places. I remember when we were trying to do what we call a day game, which is like talk to girls like in the day, you know, whether it's yeah. at a store, at the mall, like literally women would run away <laughs> like they just don't want to they talk do. to complete strangers like you could do that in america no problem like if you're yeah, a, a exactly. decent cool like decent guy you don't look like you're homeless you're trying to sell or anything people will have a normal conversation with you there's like this really weird rule in japan you're not allowed to hit on women at restaurants so, like, even if you're at a restaurant bar, you're not even allowed to, like, go up to them and, like, flirt with them and hit on them. I don't know how, because I don't speak Japanese, but, uh, like, fluently anyways. But, you know, from what I've noticed, uh, it, it seems to be pretty true, though, because I never see Japanese men trying to hit on Japanese women whenever I'm in a restaurant. And sometimes, occasionally, like, you'll see, you know, a little banter between um, men and women here in the States, you know, at a restaurant. Like, sometimes you'll see, like, guys, like, send over notes or send over, like, you know, like, drinks or something if they find a woman attractive. And that's, you know, a classy way to go about it. But I just always thought that was kind of odd that, you know, you're not allowed to hit yeah, like I, said, I mean, you know what, it's, it's, um, like I said, it's why I was there to teach guys, um, and, you know, you, you had fun, but it, it was quite a bit of a, a yeah. culture, culture shock to you. Like, how do it you happens. find, like, yeah, how do you find dating a, a, as an American girl in, in Japan? Oh, that is a very interesting topic. I could probably start a, like, a comedy routine off of, <laughs> like, just some of the stuff that I've personally experienced off the dating culture in Japan, because uh, it's just so different um, well, well, from Western well, culture. And I've well, well, let's I've let's just, well, let's let's kind of like um, bring it back to the original topic, which was the video, because you did the the kissing video because reading in between the lines, it's because like maybe you're a little bit frustrated with the lack of assertiveness about the Japanese guys. Like you had I to be more so, assertive. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, you all like as a as a woman in Japan, um, it, the dating culture is very it's very odd. So like you can't. It. I guess like the best way to meet people is online, 
if you're going to be a Western woman d mm -hmm. dating in Japan. And so, like, a lot of Japanese men, unless you're a foreigner, eh, won't come up and speak to you at all. So if you are really into Japanese nationals, then, yes, you have to be more assertive. You have to be the one that initiates conversation because odds are they they more than likely will not come up and talk to you. And I always thought that was very odd because, I mean, there's a lot of really attractive mm -hmm. Japanese men. And I'm just like, gosh, this guy is so hot. But, like, you know, he's just sitting there, standing in a corner by himself, and you go to a club. And, it's, I, I mean, you've been to Tokyo. You see a lot mm -hmm. of guys just, like, dancing with themselves. Or, they're, you know, they're, they're, you know, just with their guy friends, not really trying to, you know, associate with the girls. It's, it's a very odd it's very odd, but yeah. I mean, it's it's so weird that it's attractive, you know. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I don't um, know how else to explain it. Yeah. So, <laughs> so getting so getting back to to some of the comments to the video, I think like uh, the fact that you're assertive, you know, assertive in this culture because you have to be, and I think that's that's yes, a, you a have great. To be. That's a great thing, and I'm sure like you had a lot of like guys are like you know you go girl. It's it's so great to see like a girl be not only be attracted to Asian guys but be so attracted that you're willing to take action, right? As opposed to be passive to actually show that because you know yeah. you see a lot of girls that maybe they have a preference for Asian guys like you, but they they're gonna be very silent about that. But sometimes you know Asian guys we need to be told that that we're hot. So I think. You know, that's that's great. We appreciate that. Um, what other kind of positive comments have you been getting from, from your fans? Um, I've been getting a lot of uh, a, a lot of positivity um, from a lot of different people basically telling me, you know, like we're really proud of the fact, you know, that you're right. You're like representing American Asians in a... Uh, I mean, even though I filmed the film in Japan because that's where I was at at the, at the given time, but, uh, like, I, I have this message for people, you know, that I want to promote, uh, you know, Asian American men as being portrayed as a love interest or, you know, being portrayed as a lead character uh, in movies. Because, like, I mean, even if you do see an Asian male being portrayed as a lead character in American movies, this isn't saying K-drama or, you know, Japanese movies, um, this isn't strictly American movies, you see them more so, if they're not a ninja or a samurai, odds are they're the dweeby, geeky character. I mean, take Big Bang Theory, for example, you, and I know that that show is consisted of nothing of nerds, and that's why everybody loves that show, and it's a very funny show, but you, you see Raj's character, right, Razesh's character, and um, he's, he's viewed in a light where he can't even talk to women. You right. know, and he's viewed as the nerdy, unattractive character. But you look at him in real life, and I mean, even on that show, he's very—he's a very attractive man. Like, I mean, he's tall, he's dark, he's handsome. Like, I mean, he has nice cheekbones. You know, he has nice skin. He's just—he's a—he's a beautiful man. Yeah. And I just don't understand the stigma behind why the media portrays you know people like him as as unattractive. Right. You know, and not able to talk to women unless you've been drinking, you know, and it's definitely not the case. I mean, have you seen his wife? His wife is like, she's fucking hot. <laughs> like, I will have to Google happy. her. Yeah. You know what? I, I, I always say this because I, I was just thinking about that. You know, like you're saying how Asian guys aren't necessarily per portrayed as, as male mini roles. I think the interesting thing about at least about your video, right? is the fact that you your intent was to portray Asian men as an object of desire, right? Yes. A, a, of so much desire that you, quote, unquote, lose control and have to, like, jump them. Oh. And so that was, like, very unique. And I think that that's a great thing. And I'm glad that your fans recognize that. Um, but yeah. also on the flip side, we had some, some people that found it controversial. Uh, you yes. like what do you want to say to the controversy because it seemed to fall into oh you weren't getting their quote unquote consent or you know you're using your white privilege yeah like what do you what do you have to yeah. say about your, your detractors or those who just didn't understand that some of it was like lost in editing translation there you know what I have to say to that is I 
I totally agree. You know, as being a white woman in Asia, there is a certain uh, uh, there is a certain privilege that I do get, um, and I am not denying that in any way, shape, or form. Um, I've been to lots of clubs, I've been to lots of bars and as a white woman, and I've passed up like lines that have been wrapped around the building, <laughs> and I've seen beautiful Asian women standing in line, and I'm like wondering why am I getting in ahead of them, and a lot of it has to do with the color of my skin, and that's just the way it is in Asia. Uh, they, they're very attractive to porcelain, blonde-haired, blue-eyed girls. That's just the way it is. And, you know, there's nothing I can do that's going to change that. Uh, do I capitalize on it? There's, yeah, I, I have. There's sometimes that I have capitalized on it, and I have used it to my advantage. Uh, do I think it's right? No, I don't think it's right. Um, but also another thing, the whole consent thing, and I've heard a lot of women being concerned about men, whether or not they might have had boyfriends or, you know, been married. Uh the thing you have to understand about Japan, though, is in the part of Japan that I was at and the time that I, you know, did it was in Roppongi, where a lot of singles hang out, and Japan is on a huge decrease in population. Like, there's more pets in Japan right now than there are children. People just aren't getting in relationships because they don't have the time to be in relationships. They don't have that time to build up that social communication skills that it needs, that you need for a relationship. And so I, you know, I felt pretty confident in the fact that a lot of these people, I never saw any of them having rings on their finger, nor did I see, nor did they ever explain to me whenever I met them in the club in the first place that they did have a girlfriend. Right. Uh, and if that you, were the case, I would have avoided it. Yeah. Because you were, yeah, you were flirting with them, interacting with them, dancing, exactly. and the things that you do at essentially a, a meat market bar or club. So yes. you, you flirted with them. And then you ask them to come outside to film this kind of zany like project that you had just invented on the spot, right? Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So that, yeah. So that's that's the thing that was a little bit lost. Um. And, and so, uh. But like I, I was like, telling you, you got to be wondering where I got my lay. Like, I mean, come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> she just got mad game. Um. Exactly. Uh, but but like I was telling you a little bit earlier, uh, as Oscar Wilde said, the only thing worse than people talking about you behind your back is, you know, when people don't talk about you at all. And I will say this: of the, the the videos I do when I'm trying to project a positive Asian male stereotype, especially when it comes to dating, whether it's black women, Latin women, or white women. And tell me if these are the kind of comments that you're getting. It's like I either get like hate from white guys. I get a lot of that. <laughs> And from yes, Asian women, <laughs> and like the Asian yes, women, and I was I, like, okay, whatever. I have never understood that either, you know? I, I have got a lot of hate mail from mm -hmm. uh, white men, you know, that were, I've gotten comments that from white men are like, oh, well, we wouldn't even want you either, you fat whore, and no. I, I mean, it just goes on and on and on, and I, I think a lot of the hate mail that I've gotten has been primarily from either white men um, to white females that are worried about a completely different topic about the way I am perpetuating a stereotype of white women and Western women in, in Asia. And I, 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 I understand where they're coming from, but at the same time, that's just a stereotype that whether it, my video is out there or not, it's that's always going to be a stereotype no matter what due to the fact of the uh, the Russians coming over there and women not having work. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's why people come up and ask you, like, if you're a white woman with blonde hair, hey, are you Russian? We all know what they're asking. They're asking if you're a prostitute because right. that's just that's just history. Like, we have staple marks in history where, stere where stereotypes um, start from, and that's just one of them. That's just... It's just never going to end. Yeah, and it's in also Asia, like sort think. of like the dirty secret uh, in Asia and Japan. It's like the sex trade, right? So, exactly, yeah. exactly. That's just it's it's never going to stop. It's never going to end. And also, I mean, it, it goes for a lot of different things, like in history, you know. And it it's sad that it's that way, but there's nothing that's going to stop that, like you know. And this is just an outsider's perspective. I'm not trying to say anything bad. 
But, I mean, like, even with Jews, there's so much stigma around Jewish people, you know, that they're sticklers or, you know, they're very tight on their, with their money. And that's just a stereotype, you know, not all Jewish people are like that. But, you know, it's, it's a stereotype that's never going to end, right. you know, no matter how hard you try. Sure, sure. So, um, what, uh, do you have any, any, any last comments for, for all, all the audience and your fans out there or any of like your detractors, whatever you want to say to them? Um, the main thing that I have to say is that I really hope, uh, that my, I know that my, you know, some people were offended by my intentions and I really do apologize about that. If you were offended by my video, um, that was not my intention at all. Um, I just, I really hope to see uh, a lot of leading men, uh, leading Asian men in American films. Like, that's what I want to see. I am sick and tired of always seeing, you know, the white man as, you know, the love interest. And, I mean, this goes for the same as other races, too, because, I mean, there's other races that are fairly attractive. They can act. They have the skill sets to do so. Uh, it's just... And it's time after time after time. It's getting better. I'll say that. It has been getting better. But I just, I'd love to see more Asian men <laughs> in the film industry, you know? There's just so much stigma around, like, why they're dweeby and nerdy. And I'm sure. like, half the Asian people that I know, like, you know, they're, they're not even good at math. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? But they're great lovers. Right. And I, you know, I'd love for that to, you know, the real life, you know, transcend into the media and the film so you guys can build up that reputation of you know being you know amazing lovers and being romantic and because you guys can be and I've seen it I've experienced it firsthand so um, I just I don't understand the media and I guess it is what it is <laughs> sure sure I, I would say this I, I think you know the the pioneering spirit of the video by portraying Asian men as a as an object of desire, I think is a a good if imperfect role model for women, for Western women to like say, hey, I see an Asian yes. guy, so I should go up to him. Maybe not jump on him per no, se, no. <laughs> but be assertive <laughs> to say, I, I find him as yes. an object of desire and lust, and I should go up there. And again, mm -hmm. like you said, that. You had met these guys before, you know, on camera, yeah. you know, off the camera, and then you just yes. did this, the the sketch, if you will, on camera. So that, exactly. that was lost in translation. But, you know, mm -hmm. to our female audience that are watching this, if you see one of us <laughs> Asian guys, come up to us. Like, I will do the work, but I also know, like, a lot of my <laughs> non-students, you know, those few you Asian guys that haven't yes. taken my course, like, you know, be assertive enough. But for all the girls, <laughs> like Lila here, you know, I'm glad that there hey. are girls that are more sort of <laughs> and more attractive to Asian guys. So, Leela, thank you so much for coming on. Um, how yeah. can our audience find you? Um, you can find me on my YouTube channel. You can, uh, I think it's flygirly1234. I also have Instagram, uh, flygirly1234. Or you can look me up on Facebook, you know, Leela Rose. Um, be sure to follow me. I think I reached my maximum amount of friends but by all means please please feel free to follow me um i have big projects coming up and um i hope you enjoy it <laughs> right we will be putting it in the youtube box guys so be sure to check it out and subscribe to leela rose all right hope to see more wonderful content and thank you so much for fighting the good fight and for clarifying uh everything for our audience thank you so much leela absolutely no problem bye -bye. peace out bye Hey there, thanks for watching our video. I hope you liked it and make sure you guys subscribe to this channel and watch all our other videos. Great news too. Every Monday we'll be putting out a new weekly video. That's right, we've got educational seminars, street interviews, uh, fun infield pickup videos, and anything else we can come up with that's fun for you guys to watch. So check back for that every Monday. Oh, and if that's not enough for you, remember that for the last 10 years, the ABCs of Attraction have been the finishing school for Asian gentlemen. So we've been teaching guys how to be better boyfriends, more confident, and better husbands. If you need that extra push, you can enroll in one of our classes. But until then, we'll see you every Monday. Bye.